Welcome to DBL. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Feeling yeah, good? Feeling great. I'm yeah. pumped. Day. Great. All right. Let's get right to <laughs> it. That more like Tori. a statement. <laughs> <laughs> she's she's happy. She's halfway through the week. We're halfway through. Tour. We're halfway through. Good. I like that optimism. Okay. Let's talk about this because for the first time in history, the fate of a former president is in the hands of a jury. So yesterday in New York, both the prosecution and the defense presented their closing arguments in the case. Trump is charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records related to a hush money deal with porn star Stormy Daniels. Defense lawyer. Todd Blanche said that Trump's actions were not crimes, but merely business as it's commonly practiced. He also described Trump's former lawyer and fixer Michael Cohen as the greatest liar of all time, bent on revenge, and in an effort to undermine the prosecution's key witness. Now on the other side, Prosecutor Joshua Steinglass spent hours describing a scheme to muzzle Stormy Daniels account of an alleged affair with Trump, saying he bought her, silenced her with a hundred and thirty thousand dollar hush money deal, and then falsified business records to cover up the repayment and hide a conspiracy to influence the election. So now it's all up to a 12 person jury to decide Trump's fate. So what do you all think of this? What could happen to Trump? Tori, you have additional context. Please fill us in. Okay, so here's what could happen. Let's do a choose your own adventure novel. He could be found not guilty completely. He could be convicted. He could have a hung jury or he could be found guilty on some of the 34 counts. Now he's facing up to four years in prison if convicted. And some people do think that he will be including uh, ex Trump White House lawyer, very famous Ty Cobb, who says, quote, I expect a guilty verdict. Um, but he can appeal, which can take years and years and years and which will then kind of drag on until we all are numb. And no longer remember this case in that way. So there's a bunch of options here. In my opinion, if he is found guilty, he will be put on house arrest and he'll most likely be put in an ankle monitor, maybe in a Mar-a-Lago because Secret Service need to still protect him. And I think jail would be particularly difficult for Secret Service. I think they're already discussing ways in which around that if that happens. So that's my take on it. Um, I think they have proven it. I think the New York state law versus a federal law, which is in the weeds, is a little tricky. Um, but I do think they'll convict him. Right. Well, I mean, we kind of need to get over our American exceptionalism and understand that a lot of different countries have sadly had to jail their presidents because of corruption, because of crimes that they committed while in office. So this is not unprecedented. And, and while I totally agree with the appeals uh, idea, Tory, hearing those words, guilty, that an American president has been found guilty, it will resonate with some people for different reasons. Some people will resonate saying, see, I told you they've been out for my guy, Trump, the entire time. He's a martyr, or, right. see, I told you the, you know, what do they say, the light of justice bends slowly, but it bends towards truth. So whatever you believe, it will have some effect when you do hear that an American president has been found guilty. And I do wonder if he is a felon, how that will affect the other cases. Because if he's found guilty, I think it'll be a lot easier for other uh, juries, as he has many other cases coming up, to not want to be the first ones to set the precedent to uh, possibly, you know, send a president to jail or house arrest. Yeah. What do you think about the election, Erica? Will this influence the election? Will people change their minds? We'll see. You, you, it doesn't seem like you have much faith. We'll, we'll see. I mean, I lost, I, honestly, I lost my faith a long time ago. It's like, if you lost your faith in what? I just lost my faith in the idea of what we are told and how our judicial system and our government works is actually the way that it does. Um, it, it's, it's difficult to even say like, based on whatever the outcome is in this trial, will I, Will I be swayed in my mind one way or the other? Likely not, but I feel like that's the majority of the population. Like people have their feelings about what's happening going in and whatever the outcome is, is going to intensify those feelings. As you said, we'll have to wait and see. But outside the courthouse, you may have heard about this. Uh, in Manhattan yesterday, President Biden's campaign held a news conference with Robert De Niro and two former officers who defended the Capitol on January 6th. De Niro warned people about the dangers of electing Trump, but then he got into an altercation with some pro-Trump protesters. Take a listen. That's what Trump does to try to intimidate. We have to fight back. We're trying to do the world. We're trying to be gentlemen in this world, the Democrats. You are gangsters. You are gangsters. 
Mm, what do you think about that, Tori? Well, I think Robert De Niro is probably the only person who can claim you're a gangster since he's played gangsters so many times. I mean, when you see him, you think of New York gangsters and a bully. Well, who do you think of New York gangster and a bully? Sometimes you think of Trump. The two are on an equal playing field here in terms of power in New York. And they probably have similar circles, circles and a friends. A thousand percent. Yeah. I mean, these people are, I mean, they are New York in some respects. And um, he feels a deep passion, De Niro, that he's trying to save the country and he, I think by bringing the January 6th uh, cops into it I think he's trying to say that democracy is on the line here and bring people to the time in which we were almost uh, I mean our electors uh, our elector you know the Congress were pulled into a safety room I think he's trying to remind people of that so uh, now I do want to let everybody know Trump also responded he was up at 2 a.m. which he often does his socials late in the middle of the night he responded to De Niro saying quote De Niro who suffers from an incurable case of Trump derangement syndrome commonly known in the medical community as TDS. Uh, Dr. Jackson, I don't think that's real. I have several family members. I see. That. Okay. And he also said Robert, whose movies, artistry, and brand have gone way down in value since he entered the political arena at the request of crooked Joe Biden, looks so pathetic and sad out there. Where have you gone, Joe DiMaggio? <laughs> I thought that was strange, but I will say this. I, I do think it says something that De Niro is really the first person on the Biden side to kind of put their life and their career and their reputation on the line saying this is something I don't stand for. Uh, quite frankly, a lot of people have done all that and sacrificed their career to stand up for Donald Trump. And Do what you think it'll backfire though, given that a lot of people in this climate are over celebrity culture? Do you think that's going to actually change people's minds? Well, I mean, it, it's interesting because it goes back and forth. If, you know, if there's celebrities like Scott Bayo, obviously not on the level of De Niro, but a lot of celebrities have Clint come out Eastwood. and said Clint Eastwood and said, hey, I'm, I don't know if Clint Eastwood said that. I, I, I think he did. But they've been like, I'm pro-Trump. And I don't know if that's really damaged their brand that much. A lot of these people are kind of towards the twilight of their career. And I think that does matter. Uh, but I am actually curious to see if anybody else is going to stand up with De, De Niro. I don't, I don't, nobody else has so far. I see De Niro. Of course, De Niro is a celebrity and that's how we know him. But De Niro is also a man of a certain economic means yes. and he's coming from um, a similar background so for people who feel like they see themselves in Trump and everything that he's done De Niro probably more likely sees himself in Trump's means um, and when you have someone who isn't necessarily on the up and up from your perspective and you feel like you are there is a personal affront something that's taken that's like well how is this person basically pulling the wool over all these people's heads and they're believing it when I know the inside truth of the matter. Yeah. That's how it feels but to That's me. how everybody and feels. I know the truth. So yeah. that's why I wonder if anybody's an independent. Well, the truth is, is a, a subjective here in some ways. Dennis Quaid, I did want to say on Piers Morgan, I think it was last night, I just watched it, did come out in favor of Trump. And I do wonder if that will affect, he's not in his twilight. I wonder if that'll affect his Interesting. career. Interesting. Well. Just letting we'll people have know. to see.